Hello, this is Professor Scott Norman, and uh, we are in the Automotive Fuels Lab at Pitt State University, and I have a uh, special guest here today. I have uh, Professor Trent Lindblom, Dr. Lindblom, who teaches our hybrid class, and uh, we're going to talk to you, to you a little bit about our, um, our hydrogen generators. So in my fuels class, I use hydrogen to uh, run an internal combustion engine, and I, and I talk about hydrogen as a fuel, but in uh, Professor uh, Limblum's, Dr. Limblum's uh, hybrid class, they're using hydrogen to run a fuel cell for an electric vehicle. And so, and so he covers hydrogen generation in this, uh, in, this, um, in this hydrogen generator, we'll call it. And so uh, Dr. Limblum, uh, maybe uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, the apparatus that you have here and maybe some of the uh, tips you could give our fellow uh, students, instructors about how to use this. Sure, okay, so what we've built here is a, um, well I said, should back up, um, one of the most cost effective ways to separate uh, the hydrogen from water is uh, steam reformation, but it's a slow process. The quickest process is using electrolysis. So basically what we have here in this generator is we have an anode and a cathode and our electrolyte is a solution of um, distilled water and baking powder, baking soda, I guess, actually uh, gives it its catalyst. So, so what's the ratio of baking soda versus distilled water you put in? Uh, we put in like four teaspoons okay. to uh, 24 ounces. Okay. So um, it doesn't take a whole lot. Um, there's, the anode and cathode are both steel plates, or stainless steel plates, and um, so what's happening here is, is what we're seeing here, this is what we call the bubbler, and so we are actually producing hydrogen. The hydrogen is going into the bubbler. The water is absorbing any of any of the excess oxygen, and above, since the hydrogen is the lighter atom than the, the oxygen atom, it is coming out the tube. Unfortunately, normally we can see a vapor coming out of here, but uh, I believe our battery pack, our amperage is a little bit low. We're not getting quite the reaction that we normally would have. We know that we're getting hydrogen. It's just we can't, and hydrogen is a colorless and odorless gas, so we're really not seeing it. Yeah, see, I'm seeing 17 amps right now, and I've seen in the past up as high as 40 amps when we do this as an experiment, so our battery pack it's just older batteries. Uh, real quick, uh, how do we set up our batteries in order to uh, make this work? Okay, so the batteries are wired like you would see a golf cart wired. They're wired in series rather than parallel. So that we're actually getting, we're not using 24, we're using 24 volts as opposed to 12 volts. Okay, so. so, so actually it's closer to 25, but. So two batteries wired up in, uh, in series. series to get enough voltage. And again, you're looking hopefully, you know, somewhere around 14 uh, amps. Uh, at 17 amps, we are producing a little bit of hydrogen, but it's just a little and not a lot. So we, uh, so what we'll typically do then is that is, is that we'll take the hydrogen and then we'll take a water bottle and we'll fill the water bottle up full of hydrogen. Now while he's doing that, we do have some tips for you, and we do know we do not want to fill, uh, 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 fill up something this large with hydrogen uh, and try to ignite it. And so why is that, Dr. Limblum? Well. <laughs> the experiment we do with the water bottles is we'll light the hydrogen and typically, depending on how much hydrogen, it's either going to shoot across the classroom safely or it's just going to explode and make a loud noise. But what we realized was volume. So the size of the opening compared to the size of the bottle is relatively the same size, whereas the size of the opening compared to the bottle, the, the vinegar bottle. And so the thought process was we would fill that up and we took it outside safely into our courtyard and the students were behind us. And when we did light it off, in my mind, I was thinking of the shoot across the courtyard, not thinking about volume, yeah. it just exploded, which this might explode too. So yeah. we'll- uh, Here, if you put it right here, try to shoot it, try to shoot it that way and you can catch it on camera. There it goes. So, and so it shot across the room, 
And I'll go get it. Here you go. So again, proving that this is making hydrogen. And so it's hard to determine how much hydrogen you're, you're putting in it. So it's about experimentation. Normally when we do this, we try maybe for 10 seconds. And if that doesn't work, you try for 20 seconds. If that doesn't work, you try for 30 seconds. Slowly working your way up as a safety precaution. It, it also depends on our amperage. If we had a higher amperage, we could actually see a vapor um, coming out of the end. And so I could usually judge by how cloudy the bottle was. Um, as to about how much hydrogen we had, but in this case, it's not. And I, I also have another tip for them, and that is, um, I thought that these, that, that these heavier duty uh, water bottles would be better, but since the opening is so large, that you don't tend to get as good of a rocket as you do just a plain Jane water bottle, a cheap water bottle, uh, works out pretty good. We also do have another tip for uh, you instructors and students out there that are looking at building a hydrogen generator is that you don't want to try to light the end of the hose. <laughs> There's not enough pressure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so, so you don't want to keep, put any flame into this at all because the volume of hydrogen in your hydrogen generator is enough to cause a, a small explosion, we'll say, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's well, it, small. You might destroy your bubbler. Yeah. Put it that way. Um, and the plans for making this, uh, 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 we found on the internet, and we had a student project, so a student, one of our students uh, built this, and you know, we've been using it now for years to make our own hydrogen. And it's just a way to, a neat way to, to exper experiment with hydrogen, show students the capabilities of hydrogen. Of course, um, the Hindenburg was a pretty good <laughs> example of the plan how flammable hydrogen is. But hydrogen as a fuel source, we're not actually burning it in the automobile. And so all we're doing is using it as a chemical reaction and you could produce electricity. So um, in, that, in that realm, it's extremely safe. Okay. And I've actually seen other people build similar um, generators like this and actually running the hydrogen into their fuel system, into their intake manifold. And then, of course, your computer will take over from there and change your pulse width, and so they're getting better fuel mileage. But the fact that having something like this under the hood of my car doesn't really. <laughs> yeah. Well, I did. I, I did have a few years ago for my um, for my higher level ultra fuels class, uh, students built their own uh, generator, the hydrogen generator, and they did try to attempt to uh, run a car off of it. And what they what they had a problem with is uh, the amount of electricity that was required was causing a drain on the vehicle. Mm -hmm. So uh, they were having a problem with wiring, they were having problems with this getting too hot, they were having problems with blowing fuses, they were having a problem where their alternator just wasn't able to keep up with this amount of load and drive down the road at the same time. And, and th th they also said that they um, didn't have, they couldn't tell any difference on driving it for fuel economy uh, after driving it for a week back and forth about 30 miles every day, uh, using this versus not using it. So there's a lot of stuff that I've seen on the internet that people claiming that their hydrogen generator under the hood, but to me that's pretty dangerous. You yeah. basically got a bomb under your hood. Well, and I also think too that you know if it worked and if it did save a lot of fuel economy, wouldn't every single car today have it on, on it already? Well, they'd already be using it. Yeah, it already, already be using it. So this is uh, Professor Scott Norman, uh, Professor Trent Memblood. Uh, thank you for watching. If you're looking for more automotive educational videos, you could. Uh, visit my Professor Pintang uh, YouTube channel. Uh, thank you very much for watching. You guys have a good day.